And he's like, man, I'm in trouble at this point. And I know I need to stop, but I can't. Does that not sound like a drug addiction to you? Coach Greg, and I'm here in Mexico, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Anthony Mantello, who is a 17-year-old phenom who won uh, an overall title in men's physique. He's a Jim Shark sponsored athlete. I'm going to be going over if he's natty or not. And in detail, his 25 pound weight gain in three days following his competition at the national championships in the United States. Okay. Before I get into that, I have no idea who this guy is until I started watching his videos. And after watching his videos, I do like this guy a lot. And I think he's awesome. And I think he's going to be a future Olympian. He is amazing. Okay, not a doctor, not his coach, no relations to him. I don't really know for sure what he has or hasn't done, but I am going to explain to you what I think. All right, so just to start off by giving a background story, he's 17 years old right now, and even at 16, he looks freaky. The guy has an incredible build. He has a small waist, wide shoulders, great abs, and he competed in really good condition. And as a as a kid in high school, not only wins the teenage you know regional show, beats out everyone in the men's open division, the 25 to 30 year olds, beats everybody overall, the champion. Then he goes on to nationals a few weeks later and gets in the third call out. But this is at nationals. This is not just some local show. Third call out, first national, second show, 17 years old, mind blowing. Best part of this guy's physique is his back. He turns around and it's like, holy. I'm like, man, it's impressive. Okay. So if you haven't seen this guy, you need to go and follow him because he is going to be a freak. He doesn't have a whole crazy amount of followers. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's 15, 20,000 on YouTube. Maybe it's 50,000 or something on Instagram. I mean, he's only 17. How fast can you build up? But my opinion, this guy's physique blows David Lane, all these other freak guys out of the water. He's so much better. He's going to be more famous, more well-known, and have the physique that everyone wants to like basically associate with. He's that good. As I say in many of my videos, he's extremely good looking. He's got the chiseled jawline that all these guys seem to like these jaws. I don't understand the whole jaw thing, whatever. I don't know, I'm old, I'm 44 or 98, one of the two. Anyway, he looks good, okay? Let's start out by saying what it takes to get that ripped and that good. Dedication, hard work, and really just putting your ass on the line trying to be as good as you can be. I looked at his account. I looked at his view to videos. It does not say anywhere that he claims to be natural. It doesn't say it. If he said, I'm natural, I'm this and I'm that and I'm natural. That's a lot different than just not saying it. He's sponsored by Gymshark. What do you guys think? He's 17 years old. He's the best 17 year old in the country. He's better than most, almost all 25 and 30 year olds in the country. And is he natural? And he doesn't claim to be natural. He's 170 pounds and an awesome shape. I'm gonna let you guys decide what you think. I don't know him. Imagine the temptation of taking anything at all, anything and compete in a non-tested competition where you're allowed to take whatever you want. It's not breaking any rules of the, of the competition. Maybe it's not legal in the country. And PDs, they can be anything. Could be Austrian, Rad 140. It's simple things, it doesn't have to be. Everyone seems to think if somebody's taking something, it has to be anabolic. Has to be some mega thing. No, you don't have to pin yourself just to grow. There's so many simple little tiny things you could take that could lead to a better developed physique. But he doesn't claim, he doesn't talk about it. He just 
ignores it, which is what he should do. So whether he is or not, who cares? He doesn't claim to be natural. Don't bug him about it. I've had at least 100 people write me and ask me to do a natty or not video. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do a natty or not video on him because he doesn't even claim, like it doesn't, it, it's irrelevant. But then I had about 40 people write in and say, there's a girlfriend walking by. <laughs> It's the because I need light somewhere in this freaking place. I'm, and yeah, so <laughs> where was my train of thoughts know, here now? Oh, yeah. He, people started writing in a lot because I had just done a how to not get basically fat after you do a show and like avoiding the post contest rebound. They're like, oh, you should have posted this video. Well, you know how I do. You put a post of this video a couple of weeks ago because I mean, and he could have saw it and he would have learned. He gained 25 pounds. That's a two and a five. That's 25, not five, 25 pounds in three days. He went from 170 to 195. He dieted hard. Anybody that's young, I've been there. I gained 22 pounds when I was 18 in my first show. I know what it's like. You are on a very restrictive diet for a long time. You are not used to this. You're a kid. This guy is a kid. Okay, you can debate me or not whether kids uh, should even be competing in competitions that are judged purely on your physique and how healthy is that for you, both physically, mentally, emotionally. So he does the show, the show's over, and they're like, wow, you're the best thing since sliced bread dipped in egg whites made into French toast. You're that good. You need to now diet another two weeks and compete at nationals because you're the friggin' bomb. You are going to win and all this stuff, okay? So then he's probably like, oh my God, I just finished competing. I just want to eat. And then he has to diet two more weeks to an even bigger show. And he goes to that show and in the videos that I saw, he's like, man, this was like a whole different world, like a whole new level. And people are like, man, you're only this young and the whole thing. So it's a lot harder, lots different competition. The guys are a lot bigger. So he would need to put on more muscle. He needs like 10 to 20 pounds more muscle to really get a pro card. But I mean, at 17, how hard is that going to be? Not hard. A couple of years, it's going to be there for sure. So what happens? He then extends the diet two more weeks after. I, how many of you have watched this have been on a diet? Now, as hard as your diet was, make it five times harder because that's how hard it is to get completely mind-numbing shredded in a show. Not, oh, I went from 30% and now I can kind of see my abs. That is nothing compared to, you're already shredded with abs and then you have to lose another 20 pounds. It's so hard. So he's planning a trip to Miami to compete and looking for donut shops before he even competes. Cause it's like, I need food. That happens. You are in such a famine. Your body doesn't know you're doing a show. It just knows you're not eating and it just starts playing tricks on you. It starts sending signals. You need to eat. You need to hunt and kill a deer and just go find food and survive the next starvation famine that you go through, even though it's self-inflicted. It doesn't know. It's like, what? So then he competes. He gets third call out. He's like, oh, I'm not going to win. Then the coach says you can eat burgers and fries. Burgers and fries. Come on. It's a freaking men's physique competitor. You need to have the smallest waist possible. Just because your show is over in the morning doesn't mean you start eating burgers and fries. And it's not just a little bit. It was full of everything, he said. So A, that's going to make his look look worse. You still want to look good. You spent freaking three months dieting or whatever length of time to look amazing for this one day. You don't just end it because you're not going to win at the finals. You still want to look good at finals. Maybe just have the fries. After that, he's like, oh, the coach said, and then I could eat donut. Just one. It was a big beast donut. He gets to the hotel. There's waiting for him, the six donuts. You don't want to have all this junk ready in front of you. It's too tempting. Out of mind, out of sight, a little bit. In your face, bad. One of the worst things you can do with dieting is to have junk food and food in, of any kind in front of you all the time. Even for me, with extremely good whale power. If I see a bowl of chips in front of me or a bowl of chocolates or whatever, every time I walk by the kitchen, eventually I'm going to eat one. It's just too tempting. Okay, So he eats the donut. And he loves the donut. Of course he loves the donut. You'd love a donut, wouldn't you? I At any time. <laughs> especially after dieting. 
Then the coach sets him up with, get this, because he needed energy for the finals. Steak and avocado. Oh, what a smart coach. Better fat load. Come on, coach. Who's this coach? I don't understand what people thinking they need fats for bodybuilding competitions on show day. You need a flat stomach. You need glycogen. Fill the muscle up. Pump it up. Fill it up. Not fat. Not food sitting in your stomach. How long do you think it takes to digest steak? Four hours before the show, if you eat a steak, you think it's in your muscle now? No, it's sitting in your stomach. It's so stupid. The donut's full of sugar. That's going to enter your system. That kind of makes sense. Burger's going to sit in your stomach. That doesn't really make sense. You need several more hours to digest this. But that's kind of a different story. That's just me making fun of the coach, not knowing what he's doing. And the coach will probably say, yeah, but he eats so good. It's like, yeah, it's his genetics, not the coach. He would look good regardless. Look better without the donut and or without without the burger and fries and the steaks and avocado. Anyway, so he's eating all that stuff before the night show. Now let's see what happens after. So he goes on to the finals, gets off stage. What's the first thing he does? He eats two more beastly donuts. Not like a little tiny donut. Like Whammoth 500 to 700 calorie beast donuts. They're waiting for him. The coach's other clients has these donuts ready. Yeah, because that's smart. You just finish your show. Let's just eat a bunch of donuts. Then, of course, what are you going to do? You have to go out to eat. Yeah, because you haven't just eaten a burger, fries, steak, avocado, and three donuts. And now we have to go out to eat. So then he has appetizers and fries at the restaurant with the burger that's loaded. Gets back to the hotel, and what do you think is waiting for him there? Later that night, before I went to bed, remember those four donuts? Yeah, I ate them all. So he's now at the point of eating already 5,000 calories here. He's already gone insane in one night. What should he have eaten the night before? He should have had some fruit, should have had some vegetables. He should have drank a little bit of water or maybe some diet pop or something. Maybe get some hydration back. You know he's dehydrated for this event. He should be kind of replenishing some of the water. But no, keep the stomach empty and let's just add more crap. And I didn't stop there. I got three slices of cheesecake. No, three slices of cake. I got three slices of cake the day before because I planned out what I was going to eat post-show. Lots of calories, and he eats that on top of the four donuts before bed. Oh my goodness, it's so much food, but it's there in front of you. If it wasn't there in one purchase, you probably wouldn't eat it, but it's in your freaking face, and it's so hard to say no. Then he gets up and has his fasted workout, which is basically, holy crap, there's still 5,000 calories digesting in your stomach. You're not really fasted. Okay, now guess what? It's time to go eat again. Yay, celebrate! Uh, it never ends. So he says, okay, after I'm done training in the morning, mentally I know, I know I should be reverse dieting or whatever. You want to call it whatever you want. I should be eating healthy again. I don't need all this food. I'm way past that point. I'm getting obese here. I mean, I'm on my way to getting there because it's just, you can't eat that much food every day. But he says, and I warn people, once your body gets a taste of those foods again, it is next to impossible to stop again. It is so hard. I've done 58 shows. Don't think I don't know what it's like. You get a taste for that junk again. It is like a drug. Sugar is like a freaking drug that you are addicted to like that. Instantaneous. Boom, 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 boom. 17 donuts later, cheesecake and ice cream and Oh my goodness, and you remember eating the most boring diet in the world that you're on. Not a Coach Greg diet. No, not one with French toast and popcorn and protein ice cream. And so you haven't lost all that taste. You're tasting something good. So that when you reintroduce junk into your diet, you, you just, you don't have to like go crazy with this, okay? If you're on a decent diet while you start, you're not going to have as hard a time after. But he didn't have that. It's like you go from all in to all out. Oh, it's so hard. So he goes to breakfast and has five Nutella French toast and another entree, two full big beastly breakfasts, and his friends are like, you're not even going to eat one of those, and he eats them both. That is what happens. You can't stop. He is now all in, addicted. It's like it's something's overtaking him, and you can't stop. It's like somebody possesses you. You have, like, demons in your body, and you cannot stop. This will happen to a lot of you. 
I'm not making this stuff up. I am warning you to not do this, to be careful, to plan this out, to have a good diet in the first place, especially if it's your first show. Don't be like, it's my first show. I don't need a coach. I'll get a coach when I go to nationals. No, the most important time to get a coach is for your first time doing a show. By nationals, you should know what you're doing anyway. First thing he does when he gets to the airport, eats again, another turkey wrap. It's like you can't stop. It's just, it's, I don't care how full you are. If you can eat one more bite, you will do it. When I was his age and I did my first show, I would then eat potatoes, potatoes with cheese on it until I couldn't eat anymore. Five pounds at a time. Bursting full. Okay, now I'm laying on the floor. This is me. This is true stories. Then I would eat turtles because there was no more room for potatoes. So I would eat turtles. Those not real turtles. Okay, I did not eat any turtles. Chocolate turtles with the like caramelly stuff. And I would eat as many as I could until I was in so much agony that I had to stop. Then I would lay on the floor and not move until I had enough room to eat more turtles. That was what I did for a few weeks. And you gained 20 pounds of fat. I'm not even talking about just water. Fat. I mean, in a couple weeks, I gained 20 pounds of fat. I was probably eating five to 8,000 calories a day, surplus beyond, because I had dieted for so long and I was so young and it was my first time, I didn't know what to do. I mean, within two weeks after the show, I had more body fat than before I started my diet. True story, this happens. Get back to my house. My parents had pizza ready. I ate six slices of pizza that night, as well as a bowl of pasta and a black and white chocolate chip cookie and a few scoops of ice cream. And of course, parents want to celebrate with you again. Yay, let's eat. I went to bed, drank like zero. A zero water, zero water. Water would fill your stomach up. It would prevent you from eating as much food. Why would you do that? No, you have to, there's no room for water. I need more food. Food is calories. My body doesn't want water. Your body thinks that it's in starvation mode, it's gonna die. It's not worried about water right now. It wants food, you're starving to death. It doesn't think you're dehydrated to death. You're not in a desert, okay? Plus there's some water in the food. There's a bit of water in that pasta, for example. Oh, we'll live on the water on the pasta, but we need the pasta. Don't drink too much water. He didn't have actually zero water. He had two liters. Still some water. It's not as bad as I thought. But anyway, he said it in his video and I'm just copying what he said. I like the word Zito. So we're now two days post show. He wakes up in the morning and he's like, oh man, I'm starting to get bloated. And he can barely get out of bed. He's in pain. It's like hurting to move at this point. And this will happen to a lot of people. And he's like, man, I'm in trouble at this point. And I know I need to stop, but I can't. Does that not sound like a drug addiction to you? It literally is no different. It is just as bad or worse and more dangerous even. You might not believe me. I am telling you from experience, I'm an old man and I've coached thousands of people here at this point, and this happens. You need to keep this stuff out of the house. Out of the house, out of sight, get it away. You have to be proactive, proactive. That's the key word here. Don't set yourself up for failure. You know it's gonna be hard to eat. Would you have an alcoholic have uh, sitting beer all over the house and, and, and vodka when you're an alcoholic? You don't have that in front of you. If you're trying to quit smoking, you don't have a pack of cigarettes sitting on the desk. You don't do it. My body was a sponge and absorbed it all. And it was like, okay, uh, what happens if I don't get this food? Like if I go back into the starvation mode, so I'm just gonna hold on to all this food. Hence why I was bloated. Man, this guy is so smart. At 17 years old, he knows what's happening. Literally, I use that exact example with the dry sponge and then, you know, sucking in all the water. That is what happened to him, and that's why I gained 25 pounds in three days. I had to go to school, so I wore a hood. Like, I was so self-conscious. Like, it was so bad. I went from a chiseled jaw, defined, everything was so nice looking, to, to a water buffalo, and I was so self-conscious. A water buffalo, which is used as exact words, okay? Copying his words. It's like when I said Stephanie said she looked like a whale and felt like a whale. I'm not making it up. I'm using the words that they're saying. So this is kind of like going all in. So he was starving himself and then he just ate till society. He ate as much as he wanted. Let your body get as super fat as you can possibly let it and then it'll control itself. 
This is what Stephanie Buttermore did. The same thing as this. This is what it is. This is not the effective way to go from being shredded and ripped to just being normal again. You need to slowly do it. You don't just eat whatever you want, as much food as you want, and then just settle in 40 pounds heavier. This guy would eventually get there if he didn't stop. I tell people the real diet starts after the contest is over. After, they're like, they don't understand. I'm like, it's kind of easy when you know you're about to step on stage in a bikini and a thong and whatever, and stand on stage and a thousand people are gonna look at you. The show is done, now there's no reason, and all your friends, family, and everybody that you met in your life wants to celebrate with you and eat, because that's society. Celebrate, win, let's go eat, let's go eat. It's never, oh, let's now like go and swim, let's go for a jog, let's go train and celebrate at the gym. No, it's let's go eat burgers and pizza and drink alcohol. It's always party kind of stuff. We do it at birthday parties, we do it at celebrations. This is how society works. So we have to kind of do the opposite of what you're told. It's brutal. He did every single mistake you could possibly do, which you would expect. I don't see anywhere where he had a coach tell him what to do. He didn't have Coach Greg saying, dude, after the show you can eat a cheat, yes, be careful. Next morning maybe you can eat like a nice breakfast. Then you got to go back on somewhat of a diet and watch yourself and slowly gain some of this weight back. No. So he said it's now two weeks after the show and he still can't stop eating. He still has no control. He said he's eating healthier at least. But he just can't. It's just he messed up and it's too hard. And I've been there. I know what it's like. Stop saying, oh, you, Greg, you're a guy. You don't know what it's like for a girl. I've been there. I know what exactly he's going through. I've done it. Done it. Been there. Done that. Why I preach this stuff. Why I'm trying to help thousands of you who are going to go through the same thing that I did, that Stephanie's doing, that he did. We don't want this all-in approach to going nuts after a show. You need to, he says, he calls it reverse diet. You can call it whatever you want. You need after the show is done to keep eating healthy, to not go crazy. I'm not saying you have to do four hours cardio a day and keep the same body fat. You need to slowly go up, slowly introduce more calories, but not high calorie dense foods. You can't just eat 16 donuts. You can't eat cake, okay? Be careful. So he basically said, I went from my best physique ever to my worst physique ever in a span of three days, quoting him. That is hard on the head. If you're struggling with weight loss and, and you're really lean right now and you're just like, I'm too hungry and I, I need to do this, and you watch Stephanie Buttermore, you watch this guy, you gain a lot of weight back, even if it makes you healthier physically, even if, if, mentally are you better. If you look at your picture and you say, I feel like a whale right now. I look horrible. I don't want to post my picture. I'm wearing a hoodie to go to school. That is not healthy mentally. Know that dieting really hard and competing can have this effect on you. You need to do this properly. You need to be careful. You need to be aware. That is why I do the videos on Stephanie Buttermore. That's why I'm talking about this guy right now. Be careful. Be careful. When you diet very hard and you get your body looking a certain way, you need to slowly go away from that crazy wow body that everyone is going to compliment you on to going from that to, whoa, boy, you sure to gain a lot of weight. And trust me, there's going to be a lot of haters that are going to pick on you right away to try to put you down for gaining weight. Do it slowly and look at yourself in the mirror and be able to accept you for who you are and you can't be perfect always with 5% body fat or say it's 15% for women or whatever. Take your time gaining the weight back. Reverse diet or whatever. Slowly gain the weight back. Everybody warned him about it. He didn't do it. I'm here warning you about it. Don't go crazy after the show and don't go all in and gain all this weight too quick. Hard on the body, hard on the mind. GregDuset.com for actual real coaching and with life experience and I've coached others, many others. Greg Doucette, IFBB Pro, Instagram. Blooping up another video over here and another one of Stephanie over here because you might have known because I mentioned her a few times. Until next time, I am in Mexico and I am out side to go tan.